had a little problem today. Can't talk either. Found that I have an issue. Our house happens to be on well water. In our utility room here, we have the normal stuff. We have our hot water heater over here. We've got our water softener right here. But then we have this little alien device. This happens to be our well pressure tank. And it is designed for when water comes up from the well, it pressurizes this for about 20 gallons of water. And that way the house, every time you turn a faucet on, it doesn't have to start the well to push water through. It just drains it out of the tank till it gets to a certain level. And then it turns the well on with this pressure switch down here and it refills the tank. And then you use what comes out of the tank. Being the basement is my kind of hangout. I started noticing this ticking sound, you know, like with a hot water heater would heat up back in the day with a flame. You'd hear that. Tick, 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 tick. Well, I started hearing that from this and that's not a good sign. When we bought the house, it already had a couple issues that I put together and fixed up and got straightened out. And it's been good for about 10 years, but I think it's finally just given up the ghost. And as you can see down here, this is all supposed to be brass. And as you can see, it's highly corroded. I mean, this piece was actually replaced about six years ago. And look at it, it's actually creeping up the brass tube here. So we are replacing everything we are going from basically anything that comes with a pressure tank is going away the only thing we are going to keep is our pressure switch um could have bought a new one this one seemed to be working fine that's how i noticed that this one was actually having a problem the tank was because every time it would click on it kind of sounded like a solenoid kind of kind of thing but it wasn't this it was actually coming from under the tank so it was probably right on the verge of exploding and uh, if we weren't here, our well price pretty much would have like either emptied out into our sub pump over there or just filled the basement and turned it into an in-ground swimming pool. So to do this, first, you must turn off the power to the well because once you unhook any of this stuff, it'll flood your house. Besides that, you'll be standing in water and it'll electrocute you. So first and foremost, the 220 breakers have to be off. You can then come in and remove this cover for the pressure switch and inside you're going to find these wires and one's going to come in this way and one's going to go out that way and one's going to be the feed and then when this switch closes it'll actually jump the wires over to this side which will actually go to your pump and before you touch this thing being that it is 220 I would suggest you get one of these and make sure that the power is off because a 220 bite hurts. 110 will make you wake up. 220 hurts if it doesn't kill you. And if you don't feel comfortable about doing this, don't do it. So back to the plan here. I've gone ahead and I've already disconnected my wiring. I need to take my switch out, which is pretty much on its way anyway. Before you take that switch out, you got to make sure you drain it because it is under pressure. Now a lot of these guys when they go bad, the diaphragm breaks and there is no pressure in it. But as I said, I think I caught mine prior to that. So it actually had about 15, 20 gallons of water in it under pressure. And you should have a drain valve at some point to be able to drain all the system off. Went ahead and closed all the valves to the rest of the house. That way the rest of the house won't back feed into this system. And now I'm ready to, sadly, I have to cut these pipes. There's just no other way around it. Um, these actually screw in. And of course they're not, you know, reverse connectors where you can actually unturn this and unscrew from that one and this one at the same time. So there's no other option. I do have uh, connectors that will actually be able to PVC glue these back in and see if PVC glue the, that one back in, which will make it much easier. So I'm going to just cu going to cut back here about two inches and then same on the other side. And that way I can actually spin these guys right out, hopefully. And then I can build a tank out in the room, 
because all of this, like I said, from this PVC piece to this PVC piece is gone. New pressure gauge, new drain valve, new blow off valve, and all new chrome and check valve. Definitely want to check valve because if this system back feeds into your well, it can actually contaminate your well. In which case, then your house will be unlivable. So, off to the races and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, we got a bit of a mess. Uh, at least what's out of here so just a little caution when you cut these pipes on PVC make sure you clean them out you don't want to have anything of this those little fuzzies get stuck inside your pipe because then they get in your system and in our case it will immediately end up in our water softener system so you want to make sure they're cleaned out before you actually make the reconnections now I just got this thing out of here and I dropped it on the first stair because I want to make sure that I have everything to replace it so I don't want it too far away to make sure I know I have every connection where it's supposed to be and all that good stuff. Now, I did notice when I picked it up that it weighed about 100 pounds. These tanks are almost weightless. I mean, they're uh, probably 10 pounds when they're empty. Now, you all saw me drain it. That definitely means that there is water in the top side of this tank and there shouldn't be so it definitely was bad yesterday when I went to buy a new tank I didn't know which one I really needed and the tags here were actually on the back so I took a couple pictures of them and as I was looking at the pictures I noticed something that was quite disturbing I think I just averted a huge disaster. Okie doke, we were just test fitting everything together. We have our one inch brass, bronze, whatever it may be, T. It all comes out to the right fittings. Just be aware that these T's actually come with threads inside also and outside. We got our check valve which you always have to make sure it goes in the right direction. The arrows are on it. In this case, it goes this way. We have our pressure check valve in case things get out of hand. You know, it's, it'll blow off and it'll actually blow the water out instead of blowing all the water lines apart in your house. We have our new drain valve, which is just a standard half inch uh, hose fitting, you know, basically. We have a new pressure gauge and a new extension for our pressure switch and I'm glad I actually looked over all these while I was you know making sure everything fit um, come to find out I actually had a three-quarter pressure relief valve and it wouldn't fit so I had to actually just make a trip to Home Depot to get a new one now I have the proper half inch for everything and I need to go ahead and assemble these and then I'll put them on the tank and, and we'll be ready to install the tank back in the utility room. All right, with that, we have everything installed. We don't want to put too much on this pipe. because We don't want to break this fitting off, of course, but we got to have it tight because it can't leak. And up we go. As you can see, this pressure relief valve is actually threaded if you wanted to continue it right on down the line with something. Ours is so close to our sub pump that if it does explode, hopefully most of it will end up in the sub pump. Uh, we have our new drain valve installed, pressure gauge, and our new stand for our pressure switch. And of course, this is our check valve 
to prevent anything from in the house running back down into the well. I think it's time to go set it in place. Okay, we got our pressure tank back in place. Not understanding really what's going on here. It's the same diameter tank, but for some reason it actually sits closer to the wall. And I've got airspace back there, it's about three inches, so I'm not so worried about that. It's even more than what was used to be there. And yet, I still can cut off my pipes a little bit and draw it back. I'm trying to keep the valves and stuff out of the walkway because this is kind of like a tight area back here to begin with. And it seems like we go through a hot water heater and knock on wood about every three to five years, so you need access. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these pipes off, shorten them up, and uh, I've already moved my blocks back and everything. I mean, I've probably got uh, another probably four inches out of everything because it actually sits further back on the blocks and I actually moved the blocks back too. So um, I do need to leave that out from the wall though because I have a dehumidifier that is on a hose to the sub pump and it has to have a nice flat area to run down or it'll just cause a backfill and be a problem. Got my pressure tank in place. I got it situated up, as I said. Nice thing about these PVC lines is, is you can flex them a little bit and they don't really care. I got my places marked. I'm going to go ahead and move my tank back out a little bit, cut these pieces off, and get them joined up. And then it'll be time to put the pressure switch back on. Okay, we've gone ahead and got our pressure switch put reinstalled. we got our wires chased up here. We're about to nut them down. And a lot of people get confused at this point and do something silly. Just so you know, in case you got confused or you didn't take a picture or whatever you needed to do prior to this, it's line motor, meaning that this is the line that comes in from your house. They're on outside, and these two lines go to your motors. Now, this is 99.9% .9 of the pressure switches out there. Unless the box says something differently, then follow the box. Then, in a lot of cases, you're going to have like a black and a red wire and you're going to want to put black and red and then to the motor you're also going to want to put black and red so they're side by side doesn't matter what colors they really are it's just two different lines of 110 which makes 220 and you want to keep the phases going the same way that way nothing kind of gets cattywonked and something stupid happens but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish this up and get my wires tied up and then next We'll have to check the pressure in the tank because you got to look in the bottom of the switch uh, cover here and it'll tell you like mine's between 40 and 60 pounds. Okay, this is looking inside of our pressure switch and as you can see right here there's the over under and it's 40 psi for on and 60 psi for off. So I need to set this tank pressure at 38 pounds and then it'll be set perfectly. Because once it goes to 38 pounds, bam, it'll turn the switch on. And just like a tire, there's a tire valve here. So you take your pressure gauge and you check the pressure in the tank. Now in our case, we're right at 40 pounds. And we need to be at 38. So I just need to let a little air out and we'll be all set. But if your gauge is low, and say you have like 15 pounds in there and you have the settings that I have then you would actually need to add air to this now once it's done it's kind of like a set and done and if, it's, if you are adding air all the time that means you've actually got a bad tank and it's losing pressure okay with that set it's time to turn the power on I will do the finishing work after I know I won't have to tear it apart again And there you go, all done. One last thing we'd like to do is actually tape a bag to the front of the tank 
in this bag we have all the submersible pumps information a lot of times these guys like to actually stick it to the tank but as you see we just replaced the tank i mean scraping that off would be a real drag so the best thing to do is just put all that info in a plastic bag and actually tape it to the tank that way if you ever need it you uh, it's accessible and you don't have to go in and take the pictures or write all the information down you can actually just bring the whole tag itself with it and uh it's always there so it won't be lost and with that taped on it's pretty much done let's run a few cycles made sure everything all the air was cleared out of the lines I'd like to thank you all for coming along um it's not that hard honestly if you have skills of being able to use your hands you pretty much can do it and sorry about the voice here i lost my voice a few days ago and i haven't got it back yet i got some minor cleaning up to do and this is a done deal as long as it stays like it is because it seems perfect at the moment. Thanks again.